This is the weekend of Day of the Dead at Jardines de Lumaya Cemetery in Culiacán. The mausoleums here are more spacious and luxurious than most houses in the country, funded mostly with money from drug trafficking. The final resting place of dozens of members of the Sinaloa cartel, the most powerful cartel in the American continent, led by the family of the famous Chapo Guzman. <laughs> the dead is a festive day. The singers of Narco Corridos, these songs that glorify drug traffickers, provide the music around the gravesite. What are we talking about in our songs? Well, about real things that happen here every day. You know, we're talking about these characters who we've all heard about. If we speak poorly about them, well, it won't make them happy. So what we do in general is that we take corrido songs that already exist to make sure we won't have any problems. Because if we compose a new song and it says something a person doesn't like, then we could have a problem. Families who have nothing to do with this must also tolerate these noisy concerts. Oh, I don't really care anymore. Listening to corridos, that's become normal for us. We just stay out of their business and they leave us alone. The state of Sinaloa is the birthplace of Mexican drug trafficking. This is where the Sinaloa cartel was born. A cartel that was said to be agonizing and weakened since its iconic leader, Joaquin Guzman, a.k.a. El Chapo, was sentenced to life in prison in the U.S. But is the cartel really waning? On October 17th, during a National Guard operation, one of Chapo's sons, Ovidio, was captured. Immediately, the Sinaloa cartel mobilized. For several hours, shootings and grenades shook the city. Everybody came down from the mountain hideouts from the entire region. I imagine they had a meeting where they agreed that if this happened, if the government wanted to capture any of the bosses, that they would do this. They would respond by assembling and taking action. And the mobilization had all the characteristics of an uprising, because they had more weapons than the Army and the National Guard combined. The country held its breath while the government met the cartel's demands, releasing the son of Joaquin Guzman to calm the situation. But in Culiacán, despite the terror experience that day, part of the population still supports the criminal organization. Things got ugly that day. Until 5 or 6 p.m., the streets of Culiacán were empty, not one car. But the narcos did not hurt anyone among the population. They were just defending themselves against the government. Fearless and admired, in this chapel to the glory of a legendary outlaw from the last century, El Chapo now has his own place among the talismans and religious trinkets. But Mario must be careful about what he sells. The one who carved this statuette had to first get permission from the family or someone. Not everyone can make his effigy. This man, I don't know him, but I respect him a lot, and a lot of people in the region have a lot of appreciation for him. The cartel is most appreciated for its injection of resources into the local economy. In 2019, Mexico is on the verge of a recession. Meanwhile, the state of Sinaloa shows growth above 6%. Cartels work with a lot of cash. We know that because of the clandestine tunnels built on the border between Mexico and the United States. In the past 20 years, the army has found about 120. The drugs go into those tunnels, and in return, they get weapons and cash. And all that money is re-injected into the Mexican economy. It's the narco piece, as it's called here an accepted state of affairs from which many people benefit. The drugs provide an economic and cultural engine. The Sinaloa cartel has strengthened its empire for almost four decades. 
with no challenger to shake its hold on power.